Today, we're solving a crime. These homeowners have reported a break and enter, and we're using forensic science to crack the case. Initial officers have already been through the scene, but before we enter, we need to put on our personal protective equipment. Jenna Comstock is a bona fide forensic scientist. Here at this crime scene, she's showing me how to find and collect evidence. It's like there are more footprints there. These would indicate the pathway that the suspects took into the scene. So we can follow those in for our initial walk through. Debris is everywhere. Jewelry boxes, clothes, even a chair is thrown on the floor. Uh, look, I see a handprint there. Oh yeah, so on a, a pane of glass like this, we would typically dust the fingerprints, lift it, and then take that back to the lab for comparisons. Over here, we see more of a disturbance, so the suspects were probably rifling through clothes looking for items to take. A water bottle at the scene is a big find. We can test it for both DNA and fingerprints. So can I just pick it up now and put it in here? It's likely they touch the sides, so it would be best to handle it from the top or the lid, which is textured, and we likely won't find fingerprints there. We've got our evidence, now we're off to the lab. Okay, this isn't a real crime scene. I'm learning forensic science at Ontario Tech University. The crime scene house is a hands-on facility where we stage mock crime scenes for our students. I'm Dr. Jenna Comstock, forensic practitioner, and I'm helping train the next generation of forensic scientists. Fingerprints are one of the best ways to link a suspect to a scene. Making sure investigators can see them is key to solving a crime. Why do we need to visually enhance fingerprints to see them better? We need to enhance latent prints that are typically invisible to the naked eye so that we can document them and then compare them to a database to hopefully find an identification. Dusting for fingerprints used to be the norm, but today we're learning about a chemical method which uses super glue in a lab. So cyanoacrylate is a special name for super glue. We put super glue and water inside the chamber, heat it up, and the super glue deposits on the fingerprints to create a white residue. Jenna shows me how to process the evidence we gathered at the crime scene. First is adding drops of the cyanoacrylate. Nine, ten. Okay, there we go. You can place it on the heating element. It smells like super glue in here. Yep, sure does. Very strong. And then you can take the beaker of distilled water, put that into the water reservoir. Extracting the evidence isn't easy. It's been sealed up to prevent contamination. We're putting the water bottle and the plastic bag in the chamber. Okay, here's our evidence. We're gonna close the chamber and then get it started. So we have the evidence in here. Are we just gonna magically start seeing fingerprints? Sometimes you might be able to see a little bit of the white polymer, that white residue. So now that we're done fuming the evidence, we can chemically enhance it using fluorescent dye stain and I've chosen to use basic yellow. Okay, let's do it. I dip the evidence in the dye, rinse it, let it dry for 30 seconds, and then it's time for the reveal. So is this the moment we've been waiting for? Do we now get to see the fingerprints? It is. We're gonna use alternate light sources now and hopefully see our prints. Okay. Oh, we've got that clean print right yeah. there. I can see some partial prints over here too. Let's have a look at our bag. Fingerprints are very visible now. The next step is comparing them. So now that we've seen our fingerprints on our evidence, we've scanned it into our computer to run it through a database to hopefully find an identification. So we collected the evidence, we fumed it, we chemically enhanced it, and now we've scanned it to see if we can find out who committed the crime. That's right. Very likely, this person did deposit the prints and commit the crime. Can we go and get them? Well, that's a job for the police. Okay, that's another episode. <laughs> what advice do you have for young people? Pursuing a degree in forensic science opens the doors to a whole 
a lot of different career choices. You can study science, you can go into policing or law, med school. You never know what to expect on a daily basis. You never know what kind of crime scene you're going to walk into, what kind of evidence you're going to find. And then you get to collect all that and try to solve what happened at the end. 